The world is a rich and dynamic place that's full of a multitude of different communities, but while most cultures are starting to get to know each other and connect thanks to things like the internet, there are still some tribes that remain totally cut off from the rest of us. And if the evidence in this video suggests anything, it's that maybe we should remain disconnected from them. These are the 20 scariest tribes you would not want to mess with. Number 20. Papua New Guinea The Huli Wigmen of Papua New Guinea are extremely hair conscious. Their dress, both daily and ceremonially, revolves around their extraordinary wigs. The styles and variety of wigs that they create would not be out of place at Fashion Week, and when combined with the fancy traditional dress and bright yellow painted faces of the Huli Wigmen, it's pretty unusual to say the least. There is ritual and tradition involved in the growing of the hair to make the wigs and in the process of creating the remarkable headpieces themselves. Adolescent boys will grow the hair for around 18 months at a time before it's carefully cut and used to make the artistic hair pieces. The young men may go through the process many times over to grow hair for the great ceremonial wigs, and there's also money to be made from growing and selling their own hair to the hairdo-loving elder tribesmen. The hair is then stitched into a wooden frame, shaped into elaborate designs, and decorated with dyes and feathers. The resulting headpieces are really quite spectacular, and calling them wigs doesn't really do them justice. Now it's time for the sweet topic. This photo, snapped by some intrepid explorers, captured something truly unexpected in the depths of the jungle. They had hoped that they may see something cool, some strange plants or a weird new breed of animal perhaps, but the last thing they expected was to find a tribe's person from a tribe that they didn't know existed. And that tribe person was just a little girl. She suddenly burst out from the trees before falling deadly still with a panic upon seeing the explorers. She had never seen people in modern dress before and was captivated. Following that, the group found the entire tribe, given the sensitivity of the identity they have chosen not to reveal which jungle they were in to ensure the safety of the people. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below using the hashtag Sweet Topic. Number 19. The Mercy Tribe when a girl in the Mercy, Kai, or Terma tribes in Africa turns 15 or 16 years old, the tradition is that she will begin the process of wearing a lip plate. This begins when her mother, or sometimes another woman, will cut her lower lip and insert a wooden plug. That plug remains in place until the wound is healed and it can take up to three months. Then after that, a disc may be chosen and added to the hole. The size of the disc is really a personal decision, and the young woman will choose just for herself how far she really decides to go with it all. The disc begins off smaller and then is gradually increased until the desired size is reached. Some of the girls may continue to add a larger disc up to around 12 centimeters in diameter, but it's not necessarily what's required by any means. It is a personal choice and many will stop at a much smaller size. These lip plates actually carry a number of significant meanings for these women. It's a symbol of beauty, a commitment to the woman's husband, and she will traditionally wear it when she serves him food. It is a powerful indicator of their identity and membership in the tribe. Number 18. The Sentinelese Tribe the Sentinelese are of the most isolated people on the planet. They actively reject any contact with the outside world, and they may have inhabited their island as a people for 55,000 years now. Complete isolation on a small island in the Indian Ocean means that the Sentinelese are violently protective of their territory and have murdered anyone that has poked their nose into their business. It does sound harsh, but with their neighboring island's populations destroyed by disease that was imported from other places, any germ or virus that they might catch from an outsider would probably wipe them out. Obviously, it's tricky to understand anything much about a tribe that you can't really get near without receiving an arrow in the chest. And so, all that's known has been observed by a few nosy parkers on boats that were carefully moored further out than the arrows could reach off the coast of the island. In 1880, a British expedition would land on the island and discover the villages and houses abandoned. Presumably, the tribe had seen the invading force and then hidden themselves. The expeditioners did come across an old couple and some children, and in the hideous wisdom of the colonial attitude, they then kidnapped the people from the island for scientific reasons. 
The Sentinelese quickly became sick with disease, and the older people all perished. The children were returned to the island, but how many were then infected with deadly diseases is obviously unknown. It's no wonder that the outsider is met with hostility by the Sentinelese. Various attempts at communication have been made throughout the 1970s and 80s, with gifts being left on the beaches, but most were rejected and then buried by the tribe. More recently, it's finally been accepted that this is probably the safest for the Sentinelese tribe if they're just left in peace. I guess the nosy Parkers have finally gotten the message. Number 17. The Caribs The Kalanago people, who are sometimes called the Caribs, are an indigenous group who are native to the Caribbean islands in the Eastern Caribbean, which includes Dominica, St. Vincent, and the Grenadines. They have a rich and unique history, culture, and heritage that has endured for many centuries. Historically, these awesome people were known for their fierce resistance to European colonization, particularly by the Spanish, French, and British. Uh, this is my boy Ernest's house. He's a real Caribbean. Here he is. Hey, Ernest. Their warrior spirit earned them a reputation as a formidable opponent, and their resistance played a significant role in shaping the colonial history of the Caribbean. They have a deep connection to the natural environment and are skilled fishermen, boat builders, and agriculturalists. They build beautiful canoes from carved out tree trunks, which they use for fishing and transportation between islands. Their culture is rich in oral tradition, storytelling, dance, and music, and traditional art includes weaving, pottery, and basketry. These days, the people continue to assert their cultural identity and rights, and they're officially recognized as an indigenous group within the Caribbean. Number 16. The Aztec Tribes The Aztec Empire, which actually referred to themselves as the Mexica, was made up of several different tribes that came together to form one powerful civilization in ancient Mexico. Some of the main tribes within the Aztec Empire include the Mexica, the Acula, and the Tepanex. The Mexica tribe was the most dominant within the empire and eventually gave their name to the entire civilization. They originally migrated from northern Mexico, settling on an island in Lake Texcoco, where they founded their capital city. The Acula tribe lived in the east of the Mexica and were closely allied with them. They were known for agricultural skills and playing a significant role in the economy of the Aztec Empire. The Tepanex were another powerful tribe within the empire, residing in the west of the Mexica, and initially they controlled the area around the Valley of Mexico before being conquered by the Mexica and incorporated into their empire. It's all thrilling stuff, I'm sure. Number 15. The Awa The Awa people are an indigenous group who live deep within the Brazilian Amazon rainforest. They're believed to be approximately 450 strong, and they are one of the last remaining hunter-gatherer societies on Earth. Their unique way of life and deep connection to the rainforest are a rare and rapidly disappearing thing. The Awa have managed to maintain their traditional lifestyle despite external threats. Relying on the rich biodiversity of the Amazon for sustenance, they'll gather fruits, nuts, hunt for small game for their survival, and have a super deep knowledge of the rainforest's flora and fauna with a genuine connection to the natural environment because it's vital to their survival. Despite their resilience, the people have faced a ton of major challenges. Things like deforestation, illegal logging, and land encroachment have threatened not only their territory, but also their way of life. Efforts by the Brazilian government and international organizations have been made to protect the land and ensure their survival, but many of them still live in isolation, facing the constant threat of outsiders. Really, there's nothing to fear from the tribe, but to be honest, they have everything to fear from the outside world. Number 14. The Mashko Piro The Mashko Piro are an indigenous tribe from the most remote areas of the Amazon River Basin in Peru. This nomadic people are hunter-gatherers who have actually avoided contact with non-native peoples, and it's no wonder that this is how they chose to live, given that tribal people who have been infiltrated by outsiders in other places have generally brought in disease, alcoholism, and violence to the indigenous populations of South America. The Mashko Piro people have a reputation for being very secretive and tend to shy away from being seen. 
but occasionally they have been photographed, or at least spotted by nosy parkers out looking to poke around in tribal people's business. This doesn't always end very well. There were reports back in 2012 that after photographs were captured of the people, a member of the exploration team would then be found dead with an arrow in the heart, allegedly poked there by the tribe themselves. Number 13. The Palawano the Palawan tribe is an indigenous people who primarily inhabit the Palawan Island in the Philippines. They're one of the original inhabitants of Palawan and have a rich cultural heritage deeply rooted in their environment and traditions. They have traditionally used a mixture of farming, hunting, and gathering for their needs. They're skilled in the use of traditional ecological knowledge to navigate their environment sustainably, and most likely, this is because they see themselves as a part of the natural world rather than being superior to it as most Western cultures seem to think that they are. Their social structure is often organized around small and extended family units, and their communities are relatively small in size. Traditionally, they have lived in huts made out of bamboo and palm leaves, although modernization has led to some changes in their housing. The Palawan people have a distinct language which is part of a subgroup within the greater Austronesian language family, and like many indigenous languages, it faces challenges in preservation and transmission to the younger generation. Over the years, the tribe has faced a lot of challenges related to lands rights, which means that their lands have been stolen, cultural preservation, which means they've been forced to give up their own ways of life, and access to education and healthcare, meaning that they're exploited and then left at the bottom of society. Various organizations and government initiatives have since claimed that they aim to support the preservation of the culture and improve their living conditions, but in general, these initiatives often interfere and corrupt more than they leave the indigenous people to their own freedoms and rights. Number 12. The Suri Tribe The Suri, or Surma people of Ethiopia, have a unique style of fighting. Known as stick fighting, the two fighters, with bodies decorated with chalk mixed with water, are armed with a six-foot wooden pole. It's pretty hefty and weighs a couple of pounds. The long pole is held at the bottom, and the aim of the sport is to whack your opponent with your massive stick as many times as possible to get him to fall down. When your opponent hits the deck, they are then eliminated. The prize at the end of the tournament is an unusual one. The winner is carried on a platform to a group of girls and then gets to pick which one he's going to marry. So, young men are selected for their stick fighting skills, and the young women, the size of their lip plates. The lower lip is pierced and then slowly stretched out over the course of a year, using bigger and bigger discs as they go along. Ouch! The family of a woman with the big lip plate can ask for a price of as much as 50 cattle for her to be married. I like big plates, and I cannot lie. Number 11. The Yanomami the Yonomami people live in the remote region of forest in southern Venezuela, in the Orinoco River Basin, and in the northernmost area of the Amazon River Basin in the very north of Brazil. These people live in small villages which are subject to moving when they need to inhabit a new area for the purposes of agriculture, and they practice a kind of shifting cultivation, which is known as slash and burn agriculture. It's exactly as it sounds. They burn areas of the forest to clear space to plant crops. This makes more sense than you might think as the ash provides some fertilization for the ground and weeds are more or less completely removed out of the area. This is a technique that's practiced by many indigenous peoples, and after the land has been used for growing, the crops are then left to fallow and will revert to a secondary area of forest. Although it sounds brutal, the practice has taken place for thousands of years and does not impact the environment like the use of modern pesticides and such in industrial farming. As well as subsistence farming, the Yonomami also hunt deer, monkeys, armadillos, birds, and other things, which may give the tribe its reputation as being scary, is an ongoing hostility between the people and other local villages. They're constantly at war with one another, and this can be pretty violent a state of affairs. But if you're not a hostile neighboring village, then you probably don't have to worry very much about the Yonomami people. Number 10. The Corubo One of the groups of indigenous people of Brazil, the Daslala as they call themselves, or Corubo as they're known by outsiders, 
are some of the most isolated people in the world. This tribe is very small, featuring only about 150 people, and when you think of Amazonian tribes, you would imagine those old movie depictions and the sorts of adventure stories in retro comics and books. And you know the poison darts and great jungle hunting skills? Where those are actually not too far from the truth when it comes to this tribe. They're also called another word in Portuguese that means clubbers, not the partying kind, but the weapon-wielding kind. So it probably has something to do with their reputation for violence. All nicknames stick, you know. Although it seems just as likely that the violence is done to the tribe's people by the outsiders rather than the other way around. It's true that they do hunt with poison darts and fight with clubs, so I guess you just need to imagine an Indiana Jones kind of scenario and then go right ahead. Number 9. The Yafo Back again in Papua New Guinea, where this time we're with the Yafo people, who live in the East Sepik province of the country, way up in the highlands. These people were first encountered and described in 1988 by a man named Benedict Allen, who is a British explorer, writer, and broadcaster. They are one of the new remaining uncontacted tribes of the world, meaning that they have had little to no contact with the outside world, including modern society, apart from this Benedict Allen joker, I suppose. Very little's known about the people because of their isolation. They live in small communities in the forest and rely on hunting, gathering, and farming for their survival. Their lifestyle is likely similar to other indigenous tribes in the region, with traditional practices and customs passed down through the generations. Because of their isolation, the people are often referred to as uncontacted or unreached, and efforts to make contact with them are usually discouraged to protect their way of life while preventing the spread of disease to which they may just have no immunity. Number 8. The Korowai Tribe of Papa Indonesia This Indonesian tribe are famous, and despite being pretty isolated and living harmoniously with nature in their rainforest home, the Korowai people have hit the headlines all over the place with tabloids looking for sensational stories of wild places and weird rituals. The newspaper's dreams came true when they could point a spotlight on the unusual culture of the Korowai people, listing cannibalism and witchcraft amongst their favorite hobbies. But as is always the case with the tabloid headlines, you do have to look a little bit deeper to get the real sense of what the story might be. In a remote area of the Indonesian rainforest, the Korowai build their remarkable houses between 8 and 15 meters off the ground, sometimes in the trees or on tall stilts. The reason is said to be that evil spirits only stay around on the ground, so building up high will keep the family safe. It also offers great protection from animals and a lot of insects, as well as invading humans. They are a religious people, and their beliefs include reincarnation, as well as respect for their ancestors and the belief that some of their people even have magical abilities, and they're able to influence things like luck and also detect black magic. This element of their culture is probably where the accusations of cannibalism and witchcraft would come in, and in the past, there may have been some violent endings to disagreements within the tribe. These days, however, most issues are pretty well solved by just giving each other gifts. I guess that offering a bunch of flowers to your neighbor is a lot less dramatic than eating them, but it probably makes a lot less mess as well. So, not so good for tabloid headlines, though. Number 7. The Ayo Rio Paraguay The Ayo Rio people live in an area known as the Gran Chaco, which spans both Paraguay and Bolivia. These people were traditionally nomadic hunter-gatherers, but this was mostly squeezed out of their lives by missionaries in the 20th century, so now the remaining tribes people are more or less sedentary in villages. Although a few remain who were not contacted, they're now at risk from large-scale deforestation and loss of territory in the area. These days, there are laws in place to protect the indigenous people from contact with outsiders, and these are supposed to help prevent the transmission of diseases to the tribes, as they do not have the resistance that the outside world has. Many illnesses have proven to be devastating to these kind of communities if they are infected. This is probably one of the most scary things, really, that they're at such risk from dopey people poking about in their business. There are, of course, plenty of stories about the practices of remote tribes, but much of this is based upon hearsay and gossip. 
So if you all want that kind of thing, you can go look it up. Otherwise, we're just guilty of spreading untruths for the sake of being sensational. And frankly, it's kind of ignorant. Number 6. The Kawahiva The Kawahiva are one of the very last uncontacted indigenous tribes in the Amazon rainforest. They mainly inhabit the remote regions of Brazil, and very little is known about their exact numbers, because they have chosen, quite wisely, to remain isolated from the outside world, making them one of the world's most unknown and perhaps vulnerable indigenous communities. The Kawahiva people live in small family groups, engaging in hunter-gatherer lifestyles, and they rely on the forest's resources for their entire way of life. They're known to have an intricate knowledge of the Amazon rainforest and its diverse ecosystems, which they use to survive in their secluded environment. Their decision to remain isolated? That's likely a response to historical encounters with outsiders, which have often led to violence, disease, and exploitation. As a result, they have actively avoided contact with the more broad society. And you can't really blame them. If every time that you saw an outsider they gave you a disease, attacked you, or stole your land, and then forced you to act like them, dress like them, and pray like them, wouldn't you stay very well away? Efforts have been made to protect the territory of the Kawahiva and other uncontacted tribes in Brazil, all to ensure their survival while preserving their cultural heritage. Organizations and government agencies now seem to understand the value of allowing indigenous peoples their rights and have begun to work to demarcate and safeguard their land against illegal logging, mining, and other threats that may encroach upon their territory. Number 5. The Osmot Tribe The Osmot people are an indigenous group who are native to the southwestern region of Papa in Indonesia, particularly concentrated in the Osmot region and its surrounding areas. In the wider world, these people are known for their intricate wood carving, artistry is internationally recognized and admired. But funnily enough, their unique culture goes far beyond their artistic talent and what the rest of the world can take from them. These people traditionally lead a substance lifestyle and rely on hunting, fishing, and horticulture for their food. Their society is organized into clans, with each clan inhabiting a longhouse where many different families live together. Their spiritual beliefs are deeply rooted in animism and ancestor worship, and they create elaborate ancestor poles in order to honor and communicate with their long-gone relatives. Like so many other stories that you'll see, the Ozmat people have been invaded by the outside world. As is standard, tub-thumping Christian missionaries barged into the people's way of life and brought diseases and exploitation as well as forced their beliefs upon people who had never asked for such interference. The destructive nature of these visitors to unique cultures should not be underestimated. There is lasting and serious damage that has been done to people all over the world as invaders exploit their land and destroy their cultures and traditions. The efforts that are being made to preserve the remaining Ozmat way of life are likely too little and too late. Number 4. The Asaro Mudmen These fearsome-looking masks are not something you would want to meet in the dark. The Asaro Mudmen of Papua New Guinea are an ancient people. They are also known as the Halosa, which means ghosts and they have no written history, but lots of stories and spoken word histories have been passed down through the generations. One of the stories goes that there was a wedding and that the tribe all wore their best costume for their ceremony. However, one man did not have the clothing, so as the tale goes, he took a string bag, cut out eye holes, dipped the bag and his body in mud, and then arrived at the wedding dressed in this wild-looking costume where other people took one look at him and ran away in fear that he was a ghost. Now I can see why they were frightened. The masks can be super creepy, and the story then goes that the incident gave the tribe's people the idea of making scary masks and using mud as body paint to make themselves even more intimidating, terrifying in fact, to their enemies. The costume is not supposed to start a fight, but actually to put the enemy off. So although you may be terrified to meet a masked sorrow mudman, you are actually supposed to run away. Number 3. Batak The Batak people are one of the largest indigenous tribes of Indonesia. They live in the highlands of the North Sumatran Island, where they're still steeped in the ancient traditions of their people. 
The Batak people represent approximately 3% of the population of Indonesia. They're actually made up of many different ethnic groups that form the collective Batak people. They speak several differing languages which are distinct, but fall into the same classification as the Austronesian language family. The clans of the Batak people have a history of patriarchal tradition, and so their tribe is still arranged in this way today, with a father and son relationship being strongly emphasized. There's basically nothing scary or especially unusual about this group of people, although in the past there were suggestions that cannibalism may have been practiced. But frankly, the only people saying this were missionaries hundreds of years ago, and they were apt to say this about almost everybody they ever encountered. So make out of that what you will. Number 2. The Cargo Cults Worshipping an American soldier from World War II may not seem the likeliest starting point for a religion, but that seems to be how it went for the John Frum movement on the South Pacific island of Tana in Vanuatu. Cargo cults are religious groups that believe that by performing ritual worship, a technologically advanced culture will bring plentiful goods or cargo to the worshippers. In 1941, the U.S. Army stationed a huge load of troops and all of the supplies that go along with an army in Vanuatu, and the people there were very poor, and it's understood that upon seeing the extraordinary amount of stuff, you know, the cargo, that the American GIs had brought to the island during the Second World War, the followers of the cargo cult of Tana believed that the gods were delivering to them. The story goes that an American, who introduced himself to the local people saying, I'm John from America, is where the John from movement came from. A religion created in miscommunication, perhaps, John from Day is celebrated on February 15th of every year, and they fly American flags, worshippers paint USA onto their chests, and they use wooden guns to perform a kind of army-style drill dance. Another key part of the celebration is the creation of a landing strip with the hopes that it would coax a return of John Frum and his cargo. It's absolutely mind-blowing. Number 1. The Maasai In many cultures, spitting is considered to be rude and a sign of disrespect, but in the Maasai tribe of Kenya in northern Tanzania, the act of spitting has quite the opposite effect. The Maasai spit for several reasons. The first is to bless a person. The second is to wish for good fortune for a newborn baby. This is part of a bunch of superstitions in which they will say bad things about the baby and spit in an attempt to avoid cursing the child. So they do the opposite of wishing good by trying to avoid a jinx and flopping on the baby instead. How nice! The final reason for spitting is to congratulate a bride on her wedding day. Actually, it's her father who will spit on her. He makes a big show of spitting on her head and on her breasts, and this, they say, is for good luck and to hope that she will be fertile. Oh, <laughs> wow. And so there you have it. There are lots of people who live in lots of different ways all over the world. Who would have even thunk it? Which of these tribes has fueled your imagination? Go on and let me know all about it in the comments section down below. And while you're at it, be sure to check out the other cool stuff that's showing up on the screen, and I will see you next time.